your bridge, knowing that it is 24 grams, how do you think it will compare to the other bridges as far as how much weight it's going to hold? Well, knowing that it's um, lighter than, well, I know Preston's bridge was 31. Uh, I don't know if he did well or not, but uh, since there's bridges that were 29 and 31, and there's bridges that are 21 and mine's 24, I'd say mine would be you know, somewhere right in the middle. So it could have effects where um, it's light because it either doesn't have enough material on it, or it could be a little too heavy because you know um, some extra weight is added on it, such as the two uh, poles fused together and the flags. So seeing how they had their results as the highest being 18 grams, lowest being eight grams, how many grams do you think you will hold? Well, knowing that the, the ones that were 21 grams were able to hold 12 and 18, pounds and the, the 31 hold held uh, 13. I think mine might hold somewhere around I would guess 10 because mine doesn't have as much pieces and materials as the other ones had so I'm thinking it won't have that much support but um, there's also ones that collapsed very soon like eight so I'm thinking mine might have somewhere around 10 it's not so one thing I noticed that's different from your bridge than other bridges is that it's a little bit shorter, but it also has a very intricate design for its top piece as far as like the fortification goes. How do you think that will affect how many grams is held? Well, just looking at my bridge now and the way it's designed, especially with uh, these and how um, it being supported is mostly focused on these two bars fused together right here in each side. I think mine will be a case where um, it will have like an exact limit. It won't just break a little bit and then collapse. It will snap immediately since all the weight are focused on these bars right here. So uh, taking all that into account, it might last just about you know eight or 10 pounds, but I don't think it would go over 10 with the way it's built, so. So I noticed that when you built it, you built the bridge and you put the side on top of the base. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that compared to putting the side next to the base? So the reason why I put them on top instead of putting it into the side were two reasons. One, because if I put them on the side, it would mess up the measurements since they were measured originally to be fused together. But uh, when I was building it, I thought that that would be way too impractical. And number two, if I put them on top, it should give it more um, stability with um, with the gravity and everything, since gravity is pointing down. And if they were to be on the sides, it would be focusing more on the weight of the poles themselves rather than the two poles together. All right, so let's see how we go ahead and test it. So at four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, or seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, getting a little bit of cracks, 18. Do you see anything flexing or bending at this point? Um, so far, no. 20, 21, 22, 23. It's a crack at 23. So the only thing I notice now is the top poles, which shouldn't be a problem because they were fused a lot, uh, fused with a lot of glue. So maybe it can take a couple of pounds. So where else do you see that has disconnected if you look to this side? Well, I do notice it's bent a little bit, but anything that's disconnected? That pole, I do notice it's, it's disconnected. If I'd say the most weakest thing of my construction would be the glue on these focus points because a lot of these, or when I didn't get to add a lot of glue because the glue was either drying up or I had to retrying to, uh, to measure pieces since some, when I cut them, were too short and I would just add extra glue for them to fuse together. Mm -hmm. So that could be a good reason why those are to break first, because a lot of those pieces might be too small. And right. it didn't have that much 
glued at this point. So let's see if we crank it all the way down and see if it rebuilds and holds itself somewhere else. So I just noticed one thing that broke was these two. Mm -hmm. And that's about what we have. Okay. So now knowing your result is 23 pounds. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then you're gonna have this number right here. So knowing that you held 23 pounds, you wore, you weighed 24 grams, you almost have a equal number. So you're almost getting to exactly one. And then if you notice, there's a lot of differences in between the others as far as your efficiency. So by looking through this, where did it have you placed? So by looking at your efficiency numbers, where have you placed? Well, it does seem that the, that the original weight of the bridge and where it broke would seems I, would I all equal, if not just a little bit less of mm -hmm. uh, practicality. <laughs> so based on this data right here, I would assume that it would place uh, first out of the class. That is correct. Well done. So if you were to change something in this design to go even higher than one, what would it be? Well, if I try to change it to be more practical, the thing that I noticed first was um, when it was starting to come down, uh, the thing that broke the first was the ones where it wasn't very focused. So I would definitely focus more on the pieces that were part of the frame on the side and focus like this uh, a big amount of glue per um, bar. Because the problem that I had with the frame here is that these pieces so, were a little too so small mm -hmm. and so I put extra I glue in order to hold them on. The next time I'll make sure that the pieces are a little bit longer instead of shorter. That way I, I know for certain that they'll be holding on better instead of the glue doing all the work for the bridge. Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Alright ladies and gentlemen, come on up so you can see the screen, so we can talk about some actions that we are going to take towards our challenge. So you guys have been set some goals, you guys have been conquering some goals, you've been challenged, some goals have not been met yet, but I appreciate you guys all set your goals, getting ready, getting some action going before we start talking about everything. So. Uh, to your left, you can now see what your map will look like. Um, this will be the half field setup. Eventually, we will expand it two tiles. It will become the full field setup. So you guys can do four robots at once. Right now, it's going to be the setup where you can do two robots at once. Um, when you are doing this, we're thinking about only the red spaces. The blue spaces are if we have the full field setup because it's a red team and a blue team. All right. So when we're going through and looking at all of this, um, we have the setup right here, and we have the ability to print this out so you guys can plan and do what you need. Any questions, comments, concerns? Awesome. All right, you guys can get back to doing what you're doing. So, what are some goals that you have set to complete today? Yes, like we're trying to like. Test it out. Right? Yes. Test it out and then see what's going wrong. Yeah. Perfect.
think it's over it, let go of it. Don't put the claw well, what down. Do we do? We're just gonna end up. So, what are you noticing that the claw is still not doing? Not going up. It's not going up all the way. What did we talk about when you're trying to grab something when the motor is not as strong? Change the motor. The motor could be changed, but right now you have the strong servo. You can add one motor. Or, Nick, stand over here. Stand next to this the robot. This is Dodia Chrome OB. I'm going to color and put it over here. You cut the well, what about you? Stand right here. And then try to pick up this chair from that position. Alright, now put the chair down right in front of you. Now pick it up from that position. Which one's easier? The closer one. So, you still have the ability to change what to your lifting mechanism to... Correct. So you can still investigate with the pole and see where you can go ahead and move that to change it. Which one would make it closer to where the, your motor is lifting? So which direction would you move it? Yep, so you move it a couple holes downwards. Or you can just try one at a time and see which one. Nick and Alan and Cleo. With uh, this issue right here, so now you have your cone knocked over. <laughs> have you thought about a way of getting that cone? That's what I'm testing right now. If we drive into it fast enough, we might be able to knock it over. <laughs> Why did you get your hair? So what are some options that you could do to be able to flip this over? One, so you tried that way. What's another way that you can think of? Because normally you would just grab it with your hand and flip it, right? Yeah. So say that typically if you had an arm, you could be able to just grab it like that. How are you going to replicate that motion? Put it up and then as it drops over your hand. Try it. Hold it. I noticed that you're able to get it on the media or the low stick. What did you, what worked and what did you change to get to that point? Uh, we just adjusted the rod. Oh, no, not again. No. And I was able to lift a little bit higher. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yes! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's 
So where is the where is the news that is having the issue? <laughs> Is it the actual axle or is it the itself? Make it into a quad like um, this one, but like there, it's like this one, this robot. No, so I don't make it set. Can I run like extra tires? So what do you have to pull off to get to that? It will take up the wheel and then so we can get the out. Mm -hmm. So we carry out like that off. I have to how about green? Green or green or one more color. So how are you guys meeting your goals right now? Uh, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. I think uh, if we can finish, I think at least definitely by next class, if we finish getting all the wiring sorted out and can actually, if Roman can get the um, claw to be finished today, I can. I can oh yeah. Uh, is it the red tape? Tape. Uh, if we can get the claw finished, actually being put together today, I can work on getting. Try this one. Uh, we can. I can work on trying to get, actually get it attached to the top thing, so I can start coding it as well. Because I think that's going to also be annoying. Because I need to get the different button plus getting it set up for autonomous. But all in all, I think it's going quite swimmingly. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So I've noticed that you have changed your quad designs quite a few times. Can you talk me through where you started, where you're at, right. and where it's going? So started out with, of course. We record all this for that exact reason. So you, in this book, what are you, what are you showing here? Uh, this is a day by day of all of the stuff we've been doing. So every day we fill out um, what the like what stage of what we're doing is, what the current focus we're planning to work on for the day is, the members present, as well as at the end of the day we fill out the accomplishments of what did we accomplish, and we also put little notes of like this is what we did, this is what we could work on, things we improved. 
but for these ones, we actually have like what we did for a bit of board planning at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so we start off with the idea of a claw that would just grab on the side, like I guess this is the best example of, mm -hmm. which we actually got to a decent level. So show me how this works. Well, if I put this down, because I don't have all the hands. Uh, it works by having a servo that engages with a gear, two geared pieces. Mm -hmm. When it turns, it turns both of them together. These outside ones keep it stable, so it actually comes together at the correct point, and it'll grip around the actual cone. But we realized this would be way too long on the current configuration of our robot, so we started working on a different um, idea, which Roman has the current variation of, but it began originally with this piece, mm -hmm. which would start off with like a, almost a, so it'd start off like down, you would put it into the cone, so, so yeah, you put it you put it cone. into the cone, mm -hmm. and then it twists, and it expands outwards to lift. Okay. Now that was working pretty well, but we realized that's way too many moving parts and too many steps to actually try to get right. So we kind of started moving back towards the origins of the claw, of the kind of idea of the geared bits that mm -hmm. would move against each other to actually get us there, and that's when we came to this idea of having a. If I can borrow this off of you, Roman. Having two geared bits that move together. It still goes from the top, but when it activates, they pull into each other to make almost a wedge that keeps the cone up. And also when it drops, it'll drop it in a quick, efficient manner downwards, which will give us hopefully a lot of, um, I guess, positioning for where to drop the cone, as well as how quickly we're going to do so, which should hopefully help us quite a bit. It definitely will help us in the space confinement issue because that's one of our biggest problems so far we've had to redesign the actual frame for the bot a few times to get to this point which has been beyond annoying but we've gotten there yeah mm -hmm. other things with this shape next steps we're going to start working on is kind of getting a feeding point so that when if we drive up to a cone we can get it into a certain spot we like to easily pick it up with this mechanism because that's what it's only big flaw really is you have to position it absolutely perfectly to lift. And so we've, in this, it's, it's, I guess, evolved to the point where it's trying to be as easy as it can to lift, but we still need it to be positioned correctly to do so. And so what would that piece look like? Have you done any designs in your uh, notebook or we, anything we yet? We have done a little bit of designs. I think it's in, actually, our other, our other notebook over to the side, because we... A bit of freehand, and it hasn't made its way in here yet. Yeah, no, I think it's in the other one. So it's more of an idea. This also has. Has the, so the original ideas of the lifting mechanism, I think. No, it doesn't have it. Um, I'm probably going to draw that out. But it, it seems to be, it's going to be a very simple design of just like a, almost a cardboard cut out piece so when you're driving it just kind of like rams into it and slides it across to a point but so would that be a good thing to note in your journal for today oh it would definitely be so we'll probably get on that at the moment and we get a chance so i already have things to fill up for today but yeah i guess i'll get to work on that mr gary thank you you're welcome that's that's what i was talking about yeah no, I think that could work quite well. So your design looks good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, one of the things I also need to write down is actually the um, board, because I realized that's a bit more annoying to actually try to feed things into. Mm -hmm. So, But we have the option, because we can lift, turn this to either side. So just try to, because I was thinking lift from the side, actually. So why do you have the collection point of the cone in a corner? Different areas. Yeah, so, well, because I was thinking we'd pick up with the side because I don't think we can actually turn this to fit inside this area. Okay. And if it's too far out, we're not our collection system's not gonna actually be able to do anything by driving into it. So that's why it's gonna, I think if we mount it on the side piece, mm -hmm. it'll actually work quite well in that way. Problem I realized with that is we'll probably have to flip around what side the um, employee is set up on because then we can actually fit something to the side. 